بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in this video we'll discuss parametric gears and for the motivation we just remember how to describe curves in the in the plane in general we are used any curve in in the plane like this one here take the x y plane We describe this curve by taking an arbitrary point in the in the curve x y, and then we try to relate the x and y coordinates of this of this curve. In this case, for example, this curve can be described by this equation y equals x x cube. Another example, another example. We take we take this curve, an arbitrary point here x y. This curve can be described by relating x and y, by finding an equation relating x and y. Here we can describe this curve by this equation, x equals y, y squared. A third example, if we take the unit circle, the unit circle, one, take arbitrary point x and y, we can describe this curve by an equation relating the x and y coordinate. In this case, we have this equation. x squared plus y squared equals, equals 1. These equations are called Cartesian equations. Cartesian equations. And in fact, we are always we always describe curves using by using Cartesian equations. Here, uh, there is another way to describe to describe curves in the in the plane. So let's take a general curve. A general curve. For example, something like this. How to describe this curve? Well, this is new, the new way to describe this curve is just to take, again, arbitrary point in the curve x and y. Here we describe x, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate in terms of a third variable. So x equals of of t and y equals g of t. t, a third variable, t is a third variable. which is called a parameter. This is actually the new way where we describe the x and y coordinates in terms of functions, f and g, of a third variable, t, which is called a parameter, which is called a parameter. Based on this parameter, the term parameter, the two equations, x equals f of t, y equals g of t, are called parametric equations. The corresponding curve, this curve is called a parametric curve. So basically, a parametric curve is just a curve described by parametric equations, by parametric equations. In general, usually the variable t, the third variable t of the parameter, of course, will take some, some points, some values, and some in, in interval. This interval i could be bounded or um, um, In general, uh, it is best uh, it is best to think of a parametric curve in terms of uh, a path of a moving object. So in that case, look at t as time, and then if, uh, the parametric curve is just look at it as a path of a moving object whose location at time t equals f of t and g of t. 
of t g g of t. Uh, you may think of t as time. Usually it will represent time, but in general it may not. It is just a third, a third variable. In this case, if i, the interval i, is a bounded interval, a closed unbounded interval, a, b, then the first point, which is of f x, y equals of f a, uh, of f a, g of a, will be called the initial point, the initial point of the curve, of the curve. And at the end point B, x, y equals of f b, g of b, let's go to the terminal point, the terminal point, terminal point of the curve. The process of describing a curve in the plane by parametric equations is called a parameterization or parameterization. Now let's illustrate the notion of parametric curves by, by giving some examples. So we take, we consider this example, sketch the parametric curve described by the parametric equations x equals square root of t, y equals 2 minus t, t between 0 and 9. Indicate the direction in which the curve is traced as t increases. To solve this example, to sketch this parametric curve, in fact there are two methods. Method one, method one, method one is by plotting points, plotting points, plotting points. Let's try some points, some values of t and see the corresponding values of, of x and y. So when we take few values for t, example when t equal to zero, Substitute in x and y, you get 0 and 2, the point 0 and 2. When t equals 1, we get the point 1 and 1. When t equals 4, we get the point 2 and minus 2. And when we put t equals 9, we get 3 and minus, minus. In the xy plane, try to locate these points. So here, at t equal to 0, we have this point, 2, 0, 0, 2. And t equals 1, we get this point, 1 and 1. When t equals 4, we get this point, which is 2, and minus 2. When t equals 9, we get this point, which is uh, 3, and minus, minus 7. For the direction, it is obvious that uh, when you start from 0, 1, 4, 7, 9, then really the direction on the curve is, is the following. This is the direction on the, on the curve. This is the first point by plotting points, but usually, in general, it is not practical. Really, to decide the precise shape of the curve, three points or four points usually are not enough. In that case, to make, your, to make sure that your curve is precise, you have to take many points, 100 points or more even, just to make sure that the curve is, is the, uh, to make sure that the, really the curve you obtain is the precise, is the precise curve. Well, there is another method. There is another method. Let's see what is this method. The second method to sketch the parametric curve is by changing to a Cartesian equation. So we take the Cartesian, the parametric equations, and they try to relate x and y so that we change them to Cartesian equations. This can be done by eliminating the third variable t. So eliminate t. So from the first equation, x equals root t, we can solve for t to get t equals x squared, and then replace t in the second equation by x squared, so this gives us y equals 2 minus x minus x squared. So the parametric, the parametric equations are changed to this Cartesian equation, y equals 2 minus x squared. We have also to see what happened to the interval 0 to 9. The interval 0 to 9, to 9. I need the corresponding x interval, x interval. 
Well, I know that x equals root t, so just take the square root of each term. With 0 less than root t, less than root 9 equals equals 3. And this gives us x equals between 0 and, and 3. The graph of this equation is a familiar one. This is just a parabola, a parabola. The general graph, the full graph, is the following, an inverted parabola. This is 2. This is a full parabola. The graph of 2 minus x equals is this one. But this is for the whole domain, for the domain minus infinity to infinity. I need the graph only from 0 to 3. So I have to restrict, I have to restrict my, my graph. In that case, I, it will be something like this. Okay. But this is the graph. This is 0, and this is 3, and this is minus, minus. This is two. This is this is the graph. For the for the direction, what is the direction? Again, always we start from the first. Uh, and we go back to the to the uh, to the values t. When t equal to zero, we get zero and two. When t equals one, one and one. So from these two, we can't really see that you know, this is t equal to zero. And this is t equals 1. These are enough to indicate that the direction is h in this direction. This is the direction on the, on the curve. We consider now a second example. Again, sketch the parametric curve described by the parametric equations x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, t in the interval 0 to 2 pi, and then indicate the direction in which the curve is traced as t in k. Well, here we'll try again to, to change to change to Cartesian equation by eliminating the variable, the parameter t. Here, how to do this? Well, here now we use uh, trig identities. Okay. We know that the basic trig identity, cosine squared, cosine equal t plus sine squared t equals 1. Then just replace cosine by x and sine by y. Then x squared, x plus y squared equals equals. So the corresponding Cartesian equation is just the x square uh, is the equation of the unit circle. X squared plus y squared equals one. The unit circle. The unit circle. It's a graph is very simple. For the direction, we have to take few points, few, few points. For example, if we take t equals uh, x, y, 0, get h1 and 0, pi over 2, this is uh, 0 and 1, and pi, this is minus 1 and 0. Uh, we get here at t equal to 0. This is t equals pi over 2. This is t equals pi. You can see now that really that the motion, the direction is, is, is going counter clockwise. If you continue 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, you get 0 and minus 1, and 2 pi, you get 0, uh, 1 and 0. So the initial, and also this is also t equals 2. So the initial and terminal points are, are the same. So you get a closed, a closed curve. Now we consider the problem of parameterization of plane curves. That is, describing a curve in the plane by parametric equations. In general, it is not easy, but we'll consider one simple way to parameterize certain, certain curves. And these curves are the ones given by the equation y equals f of x, f of x, where x in some interval. Any curve described by in this form can be parameterized very easily. Okay. A parameterization, a simple parameterization, a parameterization is given by, is given, given by, 
we can take x, the independent variable x equals t, and y equals f of t over t. What about the possible values of t? Well, t equals x, so the possible values of t are the possible values of x, which is the interval i. The interval i. This is a very simple way to parameterize curves given by this, by this equation. In fact, there are other ways to parameterize the same curve. This is why we say just a parameterization. It can be parameterized in a different, in a different way. Let's illustrate this with some, with some examples. Let's consider this example. Find a parameterization for the line passing through the point 2, 4 and having a slope minus, minus 1. To do this, First, we describe the parameter, we give the parametric, uh, we give the Cartesian equation for the line. So what is the equation of this line? Equation of this line. Okay, we have the point and the slope, so this is y minus 4, or the slope minus 1, times x minus minus 2. So this gives us y equals minus x plus 2 plus plus 5, plus, plus 6. This is a full line, so the possible values of x are from minus infinity to infinity. Using the previous, or the method for, the simple method for parameterization, so a parameterization, a parameterization, as x equals t, y equals minus t plus plus 6. The values of t they are the same as the values of x minus infinity to infinity. So this is a pos one possible way to make a parameterization for this line segment. As a second example, find a parameterization for the line segment joining the points minus 1, 1 and the point 3 minus the graph is given there. So again, first we find the Cartesian equation for this line segment. And this can be done easily. First the slope, find the slope of the line segment. Using the two points, minus 1, minus 1 over 3, minus, minus 1. And this is minus 2 over 4, or minus, minus half. Now the equation of the line, the equation by taking the slope and the first point with y minus 1 equals minus half times x minus minus 1 plus plus 1. Simplifying, we get y equals minus half x plus plus half. What are the possible values of x? Here it is a line segment and you can see from the graph this is from minus 1 to 2, 3. These are the possible values of x. x between minus 1 and and the three. One parameterization, one parameterization. As just take x equals t and then y will be y equals minus half t plus plus half. The values of t they are the same as the values of, of x. So minus one plus that t this time, this time. Another possible parameterization is to start from the first equation and you take x plus 1 as t. x plus 1 equals t. This will give us x equals t minus 1, t. And y equals minus half t plus 1. What about the possible values of t? We use the, the interval for x. If x between minus 1 and 3, then x plus 1, just add 1, x plus 1. Less than 4, greater than 0. So this gives us t. x plus 1 equals t, 0 and 4. So we take 
0 T4. This is another parameterization. We can, there are in fact other ways. These two, but this is, these two are, are uh, possible ones. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And we start today with the first example, which is the following. Sketch the parametric curve given by the two parametric equations over the given interval. Indicate the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter t increases. To sketch the parametric curve given by these parametric equations, we use the practical method, which is basically by eliminating the parameter t to convert the equations into a Cartesian equation. And from that Cartesian equation, we can, we can sketch the, the curve. Okay. So how to eliminate the parameter? Eliminate the parameter. Eliminate the parameter t to get, to get a Cartesian equation. A Cartesian equation. This is the general practical way. How to eliminate the parameter? We look at, the, at each equation and we try to solve for t, for example. Here, the first equation, well, to get t, just square both sides. So this is the first equation, x equals root t plus 1. If I squared both sides, I get x squared equals t plus 1. For the second equation, for the second equation, if, you, if we square both sides, we get the following. Y, uh, y equals half root 3 minus t. If you square both sides, we get y squared. y squared equals 3 minus t over, over 4. We can just... We can multiply both sides by 4 to get just the numerators. This implies 4 y squared equals 3 minus t. Now, to eliminate the t, if you compare the first equation with the second equation, well, like half in a t, and here I have minus t. So if I add them, if I add the two equations, I will eliminate t. Okay. So add to get x squared plus 4y squared equals t plus 1 plus 3 minus t. And when you, when you simplify, you get x squared plus 4y squared equals 4 equals 4. So by eliminating the parameter t, we get an, a Cartesian equation. The graph of this Cartesian equation is an ellipse, an ellipse. Here we just we need to recall the basic graphs from math 001 and math 002. What is the graph of the ellipse here? Well, to sketch the graph, to get the general graph, it is enough just to find the intercepts and then connect them all. So the x-intercept, set y equal to 0, you get x plus or minus 2. So this is 2, and this is minus 2. To find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. Then you get 4y squared equals 4, y squared equals 1. Then y equals 1 and minus 1. This is 1, and this is minus, minus 1. Then the general curve, the general graph of this ellipse is given as follows. Roughly speaking, so this is this is an ellipse. Okay, the graph, the general graph of this equation. But of course, we ask ourselves now, the graph of the parametric equations, or the graph of the parametric curve, will it be the full ellipse or part of an ellipse? This is very important. And to decide this, now we restrict, we go back to the interval, t from 0 to 3. Okay. You have an initial point and a terminal point. So find a few points, find a few points to know what, what are, which part uh, 
the parametric curve as from the ellipse. For that, take some values of t, t and uh, x and y. If I take the initial point t equal to 0 and you substitute here, you get x equals 1 and y equals root 3 over 2, root 3 over So you have 1 and root 3 over 2. Okay, so this is 2 and this is 1. And root 3 over 2 is less than 1. So this is the point here. This is t equal 0. The initial point. Take another point. For example, I can take t equals 1. Find the corresponding x and y. So this becomes root 2. x is root 2. And y will be root 2 over 2, half root 2. Indicate this point on the curve. Root 2 is just 1.4, so this is root 2 here. And half root 2, again, less than, less than half, less than 2, this is less than 1, this is h, t equals 1. This is h, the second point. Take a th the third point, the last point here, when t equals 3, find the corresponding x, this is root 4, this will give us 2, and 3 minus 3 is 0, we get 0. So when t equals 3, I get the point 2 and 0, and this is the point t and 0, t equals 3. But from here, we notice that really, uh, this is the initial point, and this is the terminal point. So the graph of the parametric curve is just this bar, okay, from here to here. A part of an ellipse and it is very simple to see what is the direction of this is t equal to 0 t equals 1 t equals 3 so the direction will be in this in this manner okay. this is the direction of the motion for the graph of the parametric curve is this part of an ellipse okay. going or, or, or uh, sketched over the interval from 1 to 2 this is how to sketch this parametric curve Done. We consider a second example, which is the following. Sketch the parametric curve given by the given parametric equations over the given interval. Indicate the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter t increases. To sketch the parametric curve, we use the, pract the practical way, which is trying to eliminate the parameter t, and then converted to a Cartesian equation. So this is the practical way, really. Eliminate the parameter t, the parameter t, to get a Cartesian equation. To do that, we look at the equations x and y, and we notice that there are two trig functions, secant and tan. So we ask ourselves, is there a relation between secant and tan? And for that, we just need to recall the basic trig identities. And one of them is the following. This is 1 plus tan squared t equals secant squared a basic trig identities from math 0, 0, 2. Now I can replace tan and secant by equations in terms of x. So this gives us the following. 1 plus, I have tan equals y. So this becomes y squared. For secant squared, well, I check the first equation. When you solve for secant squared, I get 2 minus x. 2 minus x. And this gives us the following, solving for x, x equals 1 minus y squared. So this is the corresponding Cartesian equation. What is the graph of this? The graph of this equation is a horizontal parabola. 
and its graph is given as follows. What is the horizontal parabola? So it is x equals y squared, then x equals minus y squared, then shifted horizontally one unit. So at one here, at one, I get the following parabola. And here, when x equal to zero, I get one here. So when x, the x intercept, when x equal to zero, I get here one. And here minus minus one as y intercepts. This is the graph of this of this parabola. We ask ourselves now: Is the graph of the parametric curve the whole parabola or part of the parabola? To decide that, again I have to now check the interval minus pi over two to pi over two. We take a few points. And see what we will get. Okay. Here I cannot take t equals minus pi over 2 because it is not in the interval. And also because the y or tan t is not defined at minus pi over 2. The same thing at pi over 2. So for that, at least we take few points as different from minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if I take t, for example, minus pi over 4 and find the corresponding x and y secant minus pi over two, 4 equals root 2 root 2 squared 2 2 minus 2 0 and tan minus pi over 4 it is minus 1 so I get this point here but this is t equal minus pi over 4 if I take t equal to 0, the corresponding secant 0 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, and tan 0 is 0. So I get the point 1 and 0, which is this point, so this is t equal to 0. If I take t equals pi over 4, pi over 4, the corresponding points, this is root 2, square 2, this becomes uh, 0. And tan by over 4, it is 1. So I am at the point 0 and 1, which is this one. So this is just t equals by over 4. From these three values, I can see really that the direction of motion is the following. So this is h, the direction of, of motion. Now, the graph of the parametric curve, will it be the whole or just part? Part of the, or this part, or which part? Notice here, pi over 4 and minus by, at minus by over 4 and pi over 4, these are not the initial and terminal. Really, there is no initial and terminal because t is larger than minus pi over 2. So I have to see the behavior of y at minus pi over 2. If t is closest, if t approaches minus pi over 2, what happened to, to tan over t? So here, find the limit, find the limit, limit of y as t approaches minus pi over over 2 from the right from the right this becomes limit of tan t as t approaches minus pi over 2 from the right and the answer we just need to recall the graph of tan the answer will be minus infinity minus infinity so as t approaches minus pi over 2 y will approach minus infinity. So this means the graph here will continue, will continue in this direction. Okay. I.e. will get the whole part of this parabola. Okay. The same thing when t approaches pi over 2. Limit of y as t approaches pi over 2 from the left. This becomes limit as t approaches pi over 2 from the left of tan. T and the answer is is infinity. The answer is infinity. So y will if t increases to pi over two, y will go to infinity. So this is y go to infinity. This is the positive direction of y. So it will continue 
And this is the negative direction of y, so it will continue minus infinity. So the graph, really the graph of the parametric curve will be the full parabola. The full parabola. So now I just take the full parabola. This is the full parabola, and this is the graph of the parametric curve. We consider example three, which is sketch the parametric curve given by the given parametric equations over the given interval. Indicate the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter t increases. To uh, sketch the parametric curve, we use the practical way to do that, which is by eliminating the parameter t and then convert to a Cartesian equation. So eliminate the parameter t to get a Cartesian equation. And to do that, we look at x and y, and we notice you, know, you have sine t and cosine 2t. We ask ourselves whether there is any relation between sine t and cosine 2t. For that, we have to recall the basic trig identities from mass 0, 0, 2. And in fact, there is one, which is the following, cosine 2t equals 1 minus 2 sine squared this is the trig identity relating cosine to t and sine t. Now just replace the value of each. Cosine to t is just y. This is 1 minus 2. Sine is x, so this becomes x squared. So this is the corresponding Cartesian equation. And the graph of this is just a parabola. Because of the minus, it is an inverted parabola. So let me just graph this basic parabola. It is an inverted parabola, shifted one unit up. So this is one. And this is the parabola. Well, what are these points? These points here are the x-intercepts. To find these two points, I set y equal to 0. You get x squared equals 1 over 2. And then x will be minus 1 over root 2, minus 1. And 1 over root 2. So these are the x-intercepts. Now, we ask ourselves, is the graph of the parametric curve the full parabola or part of the parabola. For that, we, we look at the, uh, the interval of t, which is from minus pi over 4 to pi over 2. So there is an initial point and a terminal point. We try to sketch some points to see which part of the parabola is the parametric curve and also to see the direction uh, on, the, on the curve. So it takes a few values and x, y. We start with the initial, which is minus pi over 4. When you substitute sine minus pi over 4, it is minus 1 over root 2. Cosine 2 times minus pi over 4, I could cosine minus pi over 2, which is 0. So, you have this point, the first x-intercept. This is t equals minus pi over 4. So this is really the initial point. This is the initial, the initial point in the curve. Take a second value, for example, 0. When you substitute, sine 0 is 0. And cosine 0 is 1. So you have this point, 0 and 1. So this is t equals 0. When you take pi over 4. Sine pi over 4, it is 1 over root t, root 2, and cosine pi over 2, 0. So this is the point here. You have the second intercept. So this is t equals pi over 4. Take the end point, when t equals pi over 2. 
sine pi over 2, it is 1. Cosine 2 times pi over 2, cosine pi, it is minus 1. So, this is 1. And this is minus 1. So, this is the corresponding point. This is the this is t equals pi over over t. So we observe. So this is the initial and this is the terminal and this is the direction. So this is the direction, the direction. And the graph of the parametric curve will not be the whole parabola. In fact, it will go from this point to this point. So it is just this part of the parabola. This is the graph of the parametric curve, a part of the parabola, going from x equals minus 1 over root 2 to x equals 1. This part of the parabola. We consider example 4, which is the following. Find a parameterization for the ray, which is half a line, with initial point to 1 that passes through the point 0 and B3. A parametrization meaning describing the ray or the half line by parametric equations. This is the line, this is the graph of the line, so this is H half a line with initial point 2 and 1, and it passes through the point 0 and D3. To describe this ray by parametric equations, first we describe the ray by Cartesian equation. And for that, we need to find the equation of the line. For the equation of the line, we need to know a point. You can choose either one. And the slope of the line. So start with the slope. Slope. Which is M. You have two points. We have two points on the line. So just we use the formula. 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3. The difference in Y over the difference in X. 2 minus zero and this equals minus two over two and this is minus minus one this is the slope of the line to find the equation equation of the line equation of the line of the line or just ray You have the slope and you can choose either one of the points. I can choose the second point, 0 and 3. So this is just y minus 3 equals the slope minus 1 times x minus 0. So this gives a y equals minus x plus plus 3. This is the, card, the equation. Of course, the whole thing here, the equation will give us the full line. But I need only the ray, half the line, this part only. And for that, I have to restrict x. And I can see from the graph, to get the ray, I have to make x less than, I have to make x less than or equals to, to get this part of the line. So here, I just, to get a ray, I have to say x less than or equals to. This represents the given, the given ray. This is the Cartesian equation of the ray. To find parametric equations for the ray, in fact, again, there are more than one way, but it is enough to find one. And we use the simplest one. The simplest one is the following. So we say one, param one possible parameterization, one possible parameterization. is given by the following. You take x to be the parameter t, the name of the parameter t. If you take x equals t, what is y? Well, substitute here. So this is y equals minus x, which is t plus 3. What is the interval? Well, the interval of t, t equals x. So the interval for t is the same as the interval for x x is less than or equals t, then uh, 2, then t will be less than or equals, less than or equals 2. The same x interval, because x equals t. 
This is one, para one possible parameterization for the ray of the equation.